Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of David Miller and Hannah Witherich? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I will look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, and offer my analysis. This case takes place in 2014 on the island of Koh Tao in southern Thailand. This is also known as Turtle Island. It is a popular tourist location, especially for people interested in diving. The island is 8 square miles and is home to about 10,000 people. Half of them are Burmese migrant workers. The citizens of Thailand who lived there were not happy about the Burmese being there. About 40% of the Burmese on the island were there illegally. On August 25, 2014, 24-year-old David Miller arrived on the island with two of his friends. He had just finished his bachelor's degree in civil engineering and had started working on a master's degree. 23-year-old Hannah Witheridge arrived on the island the same day along with three other friends. She graduated with her bachelor's degree in 2012 and was in graduate school studying speech and language therapy. Both David and Hannah were from Britain. They ended up staying at the same hotel, which is where they met each other. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On September 15, 2014, Hannah entered a bar not far from her hotel at 12.15 a.m. David entered the same bar at 2.08 a.m. Both Hannah and David were there with various friends. It is believed that sometime after this, David and Hannah left out of the back door of the bar and walked to Suri Beach. This beach is about 80 feet from the hotel where they were both staying. Shortly after dawn, the bodies of David and Hannah were discovered on the beach. It is believed that the daughter of a Burmese beach cleaner is the one who discovered the bodies. David was floating in the water and Hannah was on the beach. The police were called to the scene. They eventually determined that David had died from drowning and Hannah had been beaten to death. She was also the victim of an assault of a sexual nature. Both victims had been struck with a garden implement, specifically a garden hoe, which was found in a nearby garden. A used condom, bloody clothing, and three cigarette butts were also found at the scene as well. Government officials were immediately terrified that tourism could be negatively affected by these murders. They pressured the police into quickly finding someone to hold responsible. The authorities insisted that a citizen of Thailand would never be able to commit such a crime. It must have been someone from a foreign country. The Burmese migrant workers became the focus of the investigation. Some of them would later say that the police poured boiling water on them during interviews. It sounds like the police interpreted the phrase burning question literally. Initially, the police were unable to develop any suspects among the migrant workers, so they shifted their focus to tourists. The police were unsuccessful there as well. Eventually, the police located surveillance video recorded not long before the murders. It showed three men riding one motorcycle visiting a 7-Eleven convenience store. The individuals bought beer and cigarettes. The men then started going toward the beach where the bodies were found. On October 1, the police interviewed one of the men, who said that he separated from the other two men prior to the murders. When he returned home, he found them asleep. The next day, the police arrested the other two men, Zal Lin and Wei Fio. They were Burmese migrant workers. Wei Fio was there illegally. Both of them were 21 years old and had no criminal history. Some sources say that they were 22 years old. After being interviewed by the police for several hours, both men confessed. They said that they became excited because David and Hannah were kissing on the beach. This was the motive for the attack. Their DNA was found on Hannah's body, the garden implement, and the cigarette butts. The two men recanted their confessions after visiting with an attorney. They said the police left them naked in a freezing room, beat them, and threatened to electrocute them. In December 2014, the men were charged with a number of offenses, including murder. Their trial started on July 8, 2015, 
the court would not allow any members of the press inside the courtroom. Anyone who was in the courtroom was not allowed to take notes. The prosecution's case was based on the DNA evidence and, of course, the confessions. The defense said that the two men were intimidated, threatened, and denied access to legal counsel. One tough area for the defense was the fact that Wei Fio had possession of David's cell phone near the time of the murders. The defense explained this by saying that Zhao Lin and Wei Fio had been swimming at the same beach before the murders. When they exited the water, they couldn't find their clothing. During their search for their clothing, Wei Fio found David Miller's phone and decided to keep it. Two days into the trial, the court ordered the DNA to be retested. The police said that there was no more DNA available except from the garden implement. The test results from the garden implement indicated the DNA did not match either defendant. Despite this result, both defendants were found guilty of murder on December 24, 2015. The three judges who rendered the verdict said the DNA evidence is mostly what convinced them of their guilt, and they did not even consider the confessions. The two men were sentenced to death, but later their sentence was commuted to life in prison. Now moving to my analysis. Were Zhao Lin and Wei Fio actually guilty of murder? Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that they were guilty, starting with the inculpatory evidence. The police claimed the DNA found on Hannah's body and on the cigarette butts matched the men. The two men were sitting with a friend on a tree branch on the beach at 2 a.m. on September 15. When Hannah and David walked from the bar to the beach, they would have passed the men, yet the men said they never saw the victims. Zhao Lin and Wei Fio confessed to the police. On October 3, they participated in a recorded reenactment of the crime. David Miller's phone was found in the home of a friend of Wei Fio. Wei Fio said that he found the phone on the beach and gave it to his friend. The friend told the police that Wei Fio told him he had found it at a bar. Now moving to the exculpatory factors. The investigation into the murders was badly mismanaged. There were only six police officers on the island at the beginning of the investigation, so the entire island was protected by just six people. The crime scene was contaminated almost immediately and in a variety of ways. For example, reporters and tourists trampled the crime scene right after the bodies were discovered. They took pictures of the dead bodies and posted them on social media. The garden implement belonged to a local resident and was found in his garden. His DNA was never tested. He was never even a suspect. The DNA analysis of the garden implement revealed that there was no match to the men. The analysis of the DNA from Hannah's body and the cigarette butts may not have been accurate. A crucial part of DNA analysis is based on statistics. Thailand did not have any laboratory qualified to perform the statistical analysis, yet they still determined the DNA was a match. They also determined there was a match in a shorter amount of time than any reputable lab would take. Zhao Lin and Wei Fiel recanted their confessions, claiming that they were forced to confess. The criminal justice system in Thailand is known for being corrupt. It is not unusual for the police to use illegal tactics and frame people. There was a lot of pressure in this case to hold migrant workers responsible for the murders. During the reenactment of the murders at the crime scene, the men were clearly being directed by the police. The men didn't seem to know what to do, as if they had not committed the murders. Zhao Lin and Wei Fiel were denied access to attorneys, and even when they had representation, it was not very good. The trial appeared to be for show only, and even in that regard, it failed. For example, the prosecutor fell asleep several times during the trial, as did one of the judges. This gives new meaning to the non-responsive objection. I was thinking another possible objection would be calls for hibernation. To be fair, I imagine trials are pretty boring when everybody knows the outcome. The lead judge sometimes left the courtroom as the trial was continuing. How does that work? Was he like, you guys keep working, you're doing a great job, don't mind me, I'll be right back. When the lead judge returned, did he ask the other judges if he missed anything? When weighing all the evidence, do I think that Zhao Lin and Wei Fio were guilty of murder? I do not think they were guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, but I think they were guilty in reality. 
The justice system in Thailand is simply too corrupt to be trusted. The authorities needed their killers to be migrant workers to protect the tourism industry. After their convictions, they talked about how they were cracking down on the migrant workers to improve safety. So they wanted tourists to believe that the problem had been identified and solved. As far as my belief that the men were guilty in reality, the fact that Wei Fio had David Miller's phone is difficult to explain in the absence of guilt. How did he come into possession of the phone if David Miller was alive when he took it? I doubt that David handed it to him, and I imagine that David didn't stray too far away from his phone. Also, both men confessed. Usually when people confess, it is because they are guilty. Now moving to my thoughts on a few other areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. The island where the murders took place is mostly corrupt. Bribery is a key part of life there. A person can get anything they want through bribery on the island, including being left out of an investigation. Officials there often develop cash-induced selective memory recall disorder. Item number two, the suspects in this case had no idea what their rights were. Zal Lin said that he was told that if he pleaded guilty, he would spend two years in jail. This may or may not have been an authentic offer that was made to him, but it was void either way after he changed his plea to not guilty. He did not appear to understand how this worked. Zal Lin believed that if he was found guilty, the two-year jail offer was still in effect. He had no clue what a plea bargain was. In addition, he was convinced that he would be found not guilty and released. It appears as though he was one of the few people that believed this. As far as the promise the police may have made to him about the two years in jail, one could argue that he did get a two-year term in jail. Several terms, in fact. Item number three. The Prime Minister of Thailand suggested that tourists were to blame for their own misfortune. Not long after the murders, he said, Will tourists survive in Thailand if they dress in bikinis? They will if they're not beautiful. Later, he backed away from his statement, probably after realizing it was devastating to the tourism industry. I'm not sure what he was trying to achieve with that statement. Maybe he thought that it would make unattractive people excited to visit Thailand, like it would actually help with tourism. It would make for an interesting tourism slogan, perhaps something like, come to Thailand, we have endless speeches of unattractive people. As unusual as his statement was, it may have actually reflected the feelings of the killers. Which brings me to my final item, number four. Zal Lin and Wei Fio were extremely poor. They worked seven days a week for very little money, and their situation was precarious. At any time, they could be kicked off of the island, lose their source of revenue, or be falsely accused. They had a challenging existence there. All around them, every day, on the island, they saw Westerners having fun, laughing, partying, getting intoxicated, and being intimate with one another. Day in and day out, they contemplated the differences between their lives and the lives of these Westerners. I think what happened here is that these two men were consumed by envy. They saw David and Hannah kissing on the beach and decided that they should be entitled to that and more. They were willing to destroy the lives of everyone involved in order to satisfy their dark and sadistic impulses. Those are my thoughts in the case of David Miller and Hannah Witheridge. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.